My name is David Wallerstein. I've been working with WR for a number of years now to explore how artificial intelligence and robotics can be applied to horticulture to drive productivity for humans and perhaps uh, someday in the not too distant future grow food even more productively than we can with our own hands. And as part of this Engage with WR, we've been talking about a number of questions. I've been particularly interested to think about the challenge we're going to have in the future to feed uh, a growing population on Earth, now 7.8 billion people, and increasing every year at about 90 million a year. How are we going to feed all of us uh, as we face various challenges from climate change? And something that has been very interesting to me is to explore the potential of the Arctic uh, and countries like Iceland in particular that have vast amounts of renewable energy, uh, water, land, and other natural resources that could in some ways make it a very ideal uh, uh, habitat to, uh, to grow uh, food indoors, uh, whether it's greenhouses or what we call indoor farms. Um, and there's so many different models and types to explore these days. Uh, so anyways, uh, with this question in mind, we embarked on a project that, uh, that focused on two uh, key questions. One is what would be the impact of very large scale uh, farming, uh, indoor farming in Iceland uh, with larger facilities. And the other question being, uh, what if we introduce new types of crops or we kind of really open up our, our minds to the types of crops that could be grown indoors uh, these days. And what we did was we uh, established a model, a very systematic model that uses Iceland as a case study, as a, a national case study. Um, and we, we got all the necessary inputs to apply to this model, everything from the cost of power, the cost of land, the cost of water, and all those uh, various types of inputs. And, um, and we, we placed the cost-related inputs against the market-related uh, opportunities that we find in terms of uh, the kind of market rates that you have for crops, the kinds of transportation uh, rates you need to pay to move products from a market like Iceland to another market in another part of the world, looking at uh, CO2 and these types of emissions very systematically to think about environmental sustainability and having that factor into our analysis. And now we can finally uh, present to you uh, this model uh, we hope it's very interesting for those who are interested in, in Icelandic agriculture. Uh, we think the model uh, can be uh, updated and changed. It's going to be available online, and we'd like to help people understand how to use it, how to, how to work with it, um, because, of course, any one of these fields can be configured and updated to potentially give you a different result as, as we learn more about uh, what's happening in the world and, and conditions change in the world, of course. Um, and also uh, those from other countries who uh, maybe aren't thinking so much about Iceland but thinking about their own country or another region can uh, take this model and use it as a framework to apply to another circumstances, uh, another circumstance. Uh, the, the, the variables can be changed to reflect the conditions in another country. The important thing here is that we're introducing a, a systematic framework to explore these questions and we hope that in itself is helpful. Um, I'll have the, uh, the WR team now, they'll provide you with the conclusions and uh, if you go into the research you can learn a lot about the issues involved, uh, some of the conclusions of the team and so forth. But we'd just like to thank um, WR for all the work they've done to do this research and put this kind of uh, model together and also the various uh, partners in Iceland that helped us to get this data and provided feedback uh, to help make sure that the project was on the right track. So we thank you and uh, we look forward to your, uh, your ability now to review the work. So uh, enjoy. My name is Esteban Baeza and I'm the man responsible for the Iceland project. When one thinks about Iceland, you might not consider it as a very interesting place for agriculture because it's in the north, it's cold, there's not a lot of light. But when you think about control environment, agriculture situation changes because in that type of agriculture, what you need is resources to create the ideal conditions for the crop. And in that sense, Iceland has a really plentiful resources that can make control environment agriculture a good idea. It has lots of uh, green energy, geothermal energy, hydrological energy, and it also has a lot of space. So in that sense, Iceland becomes an interesting place for control environment agriculture. 
When we think about agriculture, normally people tend to think on open field agriculture. In controlled environment agriculture, what we do is to create the ideal environmental conditions for the crop. So we cover the crop with a, with a, with a structure, it can be a greenhouse or can be an indoor farm, eh? and we provide the crop with the ideal growing conditions, the, the, the temperature, the optimum temperature, the optimum humidity and the optimum light levels, so that the crop can develop all the potential that it has and produce maximum yields with high quality. In order to decide which crops we would uh, analyze to be potentially grown in, uh, in control environmental agriculture in Iceland, what we did is to develop uh, and use a, a crop selection tool. In this tool, what we did is that we, de we defined first a list of potentially interesting crops, 1920 crops, and then we defined a number of constraints which are essential to decide which crops are more interesting. And then we were scoring these constraints and at the end we selected the crops that scored the most. In the end, we made a selection that included um, both crops which are uh, already grown uh, very widely in controlled environment agriculture, which are crops which are normally consumed by people because they have high vitamin, which are healthy crops like tomatoes, lettuce, etc. But those crops, of course, they don't have a lot of calories, so we also wanted to include some crops which had a high calorie content and that which can cover a large amount of the calorie request by a person uh, on a normal day basis. Now for the simulation of the greenhouse climate and the simulation of the amount of resources which are needed to grow, we use a program, a software called Caspro, that we develop here in our business unit in Wageningen University Greenhouse Horticulture. And in this model, which is based on an energy and mass balance of, of, of the greenhouse, we can uh, for any climate in the world and for a given uh, uh, set of equipment in the greenhouse, cover, heating system, cooling system, artificial lighting, we can simulate the climate that the greenhouse will have. We can simulate what will be the temperature in the greenhouse and what will be the humidity in the greenhouse, what will be the amount of light. And it also simulates how much resources we need for that greenhouse, how much fossil fuel, how much electricity, how much water. And then we have a whole simulation that will predict how the greenhouse is going to perform in a certain location. We also have to simulate the yield that we can get. And for that, we use another uh, type of models that we have developed here, crop growth models for different crops. And once we have an estimation of uh, the yield that we can get in every technical scenario, then uh, we can start gathering data on uh, what are the costs required in, in terms of uh, labor, uh, etc. And those costs were retrieved uh, from Earth 2.0 from Iceland. And for the investment cost, uh, basically, we used uh, information that we retrieved from uh, an analysis which is done every year in Dutch horticulture by our organization, which is called uh, the Queen, which is a, a report that is done uh, at a yearly basis, which gathers all the essential information on, on cost and, and, and investment costs on, on Dutch horticulture and these numbers were used to, to, uh, to obtain the investment costs for Iceland. What we have highlighted is that there are basically two types of crops for which uh, controlled environment agriculture in, in, in a place like Iceland would make sense. One of them is uh, clearly high value products, eh? products for which maybe you don't get very high yields but which have a very high value in some markets like for instance berries, eh? raspberries. And the other one are products which have a high water content and a high harvest index. That is, products in which most of the biomass that the plant is producing is going to the harvestable part. So for instance, lettuce, tomato, those are crops, but because they have such a high water content, we can produce a lot per square meter. I always say that in the end, when, what we sell when we sell a tomato or a lettuce is a lot of water and a lot of vitamins. Uh, at a very good price and that's why uh, in greenhouses we can make a good profit out of these crops. My name is Juri Dijkshorn, I'm a researcher working for Wageningen Economic Research and I'm a market researcher. In this project I studied uh, the possible export markets for produce uh, uh, produced in Iceland. Um, we studied the markets by uh, using uh, the Market Explorer, uh, that is a, a tool that we have developed in Wageningen Economic Research and it takes into account all kinds of different indicators that are publicly available. Uh, it includes uh, the import, it includes the production, it includes uh, GDP for example, which is also important in terms of uh, purchasing power um, and it gives an overview of what kind of markets are more interesting uh, based on a ranking coming out of the Market Explorer.
After we uh, have selected all the different uh, markets, uh, we started to look at the different wholesale prices. Uh, those prices are really important uh, because in the end it will determine if the business case is profitable for the Iceland situation. Um, after looking at the wholesale prices, we also still are started collecting data, for example on transportation costs and on importation fees, uh, which are applicable in some countries. One of the key insights uh, for me is that um, it is already quite feasible to produce uh, vegetables um, in a profit profitable way uh, for the domestic market, uh, but also um, already in some cases for the export market. Um, that is really interesting. Um, also, um, it gives uh, potential for further development, um, like if you are able to reduce some of the, um, some of the cost items, um, then it will become even more profitable um, and then it becomes really interesting. In Iceland, there are two major uh, costs uh, which uh, can affect the benefit eh, of the production in, in greenhouses. And those are the energy, because you need a lot of energy in Iceland mostly for uh, artificial lighting. It's a very dark place, so in order to provide the optimum amounts of lights to the crops, you really need to uh, use a lot of artificial lights. It needs a lot of electricity and a little bit of heating also from your thermal energy. And the other one is obviously labor because labor is, is, is not cheap in Iceland and uh, normally these crops, tomatoes, lettuce, they require high levels of, of, of labor intensity. Uh, but there, of course this is something to solve in the future that can also be an interesting uh, path is to try to automate and, and to, to, to uh, develop robots that can do or replace partially the work of humans. Certainly there, there can be situations in which uh, which switch the balance to make Iceland maybe a more interesting place to export. And, and we can think, for instance, about climate change. Eh? Climate change is, is something very worrying and is threatening a lot of the areas in the world that are doing open field agriculture they, they, because there is more drought, because they, there are floods, because there are more pests and diseases. And controlled environment agriculture is something that helps in, in, in preventing these problems right? because it uses less water, it, it can detach the crop from the outside conditions, it can limit the damage that crops and diseases can make. So this could be a game changer right? that would make some territories on earth where now it doesn't look like it's very interesting to produce to make them more interesting because they have a lot of a lot of uh, resources like energy and another one could be also that there is more te technology develop uh, that improves the transportation of fresh products yeah what this study has uh, highlighted is that uh, uh, for the internal market there is certainly potential in uh, building greenhouses in in Iceland and growing a certain amount of crops and that in the international context at the moment, only some combinations of high-value crops and high-value uh, high, uh, markets could be interesting. But if in the future uh, the cost of uh, energy, labor and also tran transportation costs can be reduced, then Iceland could certainly be able to play a role in producing very sustainably uh, greenhouse production.